What does your everyday look like? You see, it's one thing to go to church or fellowship on the weekends and then have your every day be a reflection of something totally opposite of that. You see, God didn't just call us into a Saturday or Sunday Christian walk. He called us into a discipleship with him. That means that we will commit ourselves to have our entire lives every day, 24 seven, one that is a representative, an ambassador of God's kingdom. And especially when it comes to those hard situations, when we are pressed, when we are irritated, when we can get frustrated, when we can get angry, those are the moments where our true character, what we are really like behind the mask comes out to show. And brothers and sisters, I want to share this incredible testimony with you. A few days ago, I was busy working, right? And I got this call and this, this call, my phone is ringing and, and I'm not expecting anyone to call me, right? I'm not expecting a call. And, and naturally my expectation is that this is going to be a robo call, right? Or a spammer or even a scammer. And I just pick up the phone and I answer and I'm like, hello, who's there? And this is the moment where I'm tested because the man answers and he says that he is from the Social Security Administration and that I'm in trouble and that he needs my name and that he needs to resolve an issue that that's connected to my Social Security number. Right. And of course, this is clearly a scam and I know it for what it is immediately. And what we are inclined to do is either to freak out and start screaming at the scammer or to just, you know, put the phone down or whatever in anger, right? That is what we could say is natural, normal, expected behavior of us. But see, there was something different because when this guy was speaking to me, I wasn't hearing the voice of a scam artist. I was hearing the voice of a man who God wanted of a man who was lost, who was in a position. And I knew as I was thinking this, I asked the father, God, what is going on? And I just heard he doesn't even want this job. And the father put my heart that this scam artist, he doesn't even want to do what he is doing. And the first words out of my mouth after he asks my name and some of my details is I say, brother, why are you doing this? You don't need to do this. You know that, right? You don't need to go ahead with this anymore. God has something better for you. He is preparing a way for you out of this. But brother, you will need to trust him. And suddenly the man goes quiet. And there is about a 10 second pause in this call. And then he says, yes, what you are saying is right. And I start talking to him. I say, brother, yes, you're right. And listen, brother, God doesn't want this for you. He has a, you are valuable in his sight. You are precious in his eyes and he has a calling for you that is so much greater than this. You don't need to settle for this horrible thing that you're busy with. And I said this not out of anger and hatred for him, but out of a pure heart of love. And that was the thing that wrecked this man's heart. And he was a little quiet in the beginning, but he listened. He just said yes. And he allowed me to speak to him. And we had a 40 minute phone call talking about nothing except God. The scam was set aside after 10 seconds and God was put on top of this call for the next 40 minutes. Brothers and sisters, this man thought that he was going to scam me. But what God had planned for him was something different because God told me the moment he called me that he wants his heart. 
He said his name was Nelson in the beginning of the call. And he started explaining to me why he is in this position, why he is doing what he does. And he he said that he doesn't want this job, that he actually he wants to he doesn't know how else to feed his family. And then as we talked through his struggles, I told him that God can provide and will provide for him, but he needs to trust God. Here is a part of the recording of this call. Can we pray, Nelson, and ask Jesus to give you a new job? Yes, but if there is no way for me, no, I have no qualification. I have no education. My education is very low. How can I have? How can I have other good job? There is no way for me, though, no, this one. Brother, I know that you're trying to understand this with your mind, you know? You're trying to understand with your mind, how will I make money if I don't have a qualification? Even if you had a qualification, it is not the qualification that gives you money. It is God that gives you money. God is the one who cares for you regardless of our qualifications and things like that. It is ultimately always God who gives us a job. It is not, not up to us or our qualification. It is God. He is the one who cares for us. He is the one who gives us a breath every single second. He gives breath in our lungs. He is the one who gives everything for us that is good. And He can give you a new job. He will give you a new job. Thank you, thank you very much. But according to my situation, it's very difficult to leave this. I know it, I can understand it's difficult, brother. But I want to encourage you that God is able, He is powerful. And I'm going to pray for you right now, Nelson. You can just listen. I'm going to pray for you and I'm going to ask Jesus to confirm to you everything that I have been telling you. And I'm going to, and you, you're going to see that Jesus is going to touch you right now and he's going to heal you of all the hurt and the stress and the worries uncertainties fears all these things jesus we come to you we thank you for freedom right now in nelson's heart touch him right now lord and show him that you love him jesus i thank you for overwhelming him now with your presence your love your power your freedom jesus i thank you lord for just showing Nelson that you can care for him. Father, that you can give him a new job. Lord, you don't want him to have that job that he has right now. And so God, I proclaim over his life that when he leaves this job, you will line up a new job for him immediately. But this is Nelson's decision. So Father, I ask that you would empower Nelson, that you would come and visit him in the night in dreams and in visions, to change Nelson's life forever. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, Nelson. What do you think, brother? Yes. Thank you. Yes, brother. It's because he, lo he loves you. Do you know that? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Dad, I'm, I'm very thank you to you because yeah, are you a missionary? Um, I follow Jesus. I am just a normal person. Yes. Uh, yes, after this month, after getting salary, uh, I want to leave this. You want to? Because actually, I don't want to work uh, Yes, I will leave this. After getting salary. So you say you want to live for Please Jesus? Pray for me. I will leave this company, I said. Amen, brother. That is amazing. Jesus is going to give you a new job, brother. Nelson, put your trust in him. Put your trust in him. Pray to him and talk to him. And he will guide you. He is the one who sent me to you today. Just pray for me sometime, my name is actually 
Nelson is not my name also. This is my composed name. Let me tell you. Sure. I'm here in So actually my address is my name is but you can call me as Nelson, no problem. Alright brother, that's good. Please pray for me. Isn't that incredible? He is saying that he, after this one encounter with me, after me praying for him and not me, not it's not about me, but after God coming and changing his heart in that moment, you heard how quiet he was after that prayer, right? And that was because God was busy on him. God was busy convicting him and he didn't have words. God was on him. His Holy Spirit was on him and he didn't have any words to say. And then what came on next was he said, I I'm going to have to leave at the end of the month. I can't do this anymore. And he realizes that what I'm saying is true. And he and brothers, I need you to pray for Nelson. But by the end of the call, he even told me, I need to tell you, he says, I, I want you to pray for me. Please pray for me. But I want you to know my name is not Nelson. And he even tells me his real name, which I'm not going to disclose. But he tells me his real name, showing how much trust I have built with him in this little call because of God, because I'm treating him in love as a human being, not as a scammer. You see, brothers and sisters, if you treat people as a scammer or as a thief or as a liar or as what they have done instead of how God is seeing them, how do you expect them to change? You see, is it is by how God shows us kindness, how he treats us the way he made us and for what he made us. When he treats us in that light, that is when we become that. That's why we need to pull out the treasure of these out of these people instead of just pointing out the trash. Trust me, they know about their trash. They know what they did is do is wrong. This is why this guy he, he, he knew he was wrong from in the first 10 seconds. I didn't need to explain to him or accuse him that he knew it. And the conviction of God, the love of God, which brings true conviction, a conviction that inspires change because it comes from love. That is what hit him. And that is why he wanted to change. And so, brothers and sisters, I would like to ask you the next time you pick up that phone and it's a scam artist or next time that someone does wrong to you. Next time there is an enemy that tries to stab you in the back or hurt you or steal from you or despitefully use you. Treat them the way that Jesus would treat them and not like the world treats them. Then. They will be convicted and they will truly turn from their sins. That is what makes people turn from their sins and repent. Is when we come and love true love to them. And these are the moments, brothers and sisters, that is a bigger testimony of your heart and life than anything else. And God is watching. He is looking. How are you going to respond when the enemy or your enemies come? again, a part uh, on your path and against you. What will you do in response? Your call to love those who hate you, to turn the other cheek. If he wants your coat, give him everything, right? If he wants to walk with you one mile, go with him 10. So thank you guys for watching. I hope that this short testimony has blessed you. Please pray for this man who we will still call Nelson and let's pray for him to stick to what he said. Let's pray for him to leave this job and pray for God to provide something better for him. I trust that God will do that because he's a good father who provides for his children.